This tutorial has been designed primarily for Windows based computers using a mouse and a number pad. I recommend that you get a two button mouse with a scroll wheel if you don't have one. This goes for Mac users too. And if you don't have a number pad you can either buy one or you can set up Blender to emulate a number pad and use the numbers on the top row of the keyboard instead. To do this you can find a checkbox under the input section of the user preferences in Blender. Although this is a beginner's tutorial and covers everything you need to know, it will make more sense if you can control Blender's cameras before you start. I've summarised the main controls here, so you might want to pause the video here and make a note of these. A good way of navigating around a scene is to use the camera fly mode, which allows the camera to fly through the scene using the mouse and keyboard. It's a good idea to work to a drawing with dimensions written on it like this, so you know exactly what you're going to make. This is a quick sketch I made of a real table, which I measured up. Basically it's made up of a box and four cylinders for the legs. Starting Blender then, when you start Blender you get this object in it already which I usually delete. You can right click on an object to select it and then press X to bring up this little menu which allows you to delete the object. Before you place any objects in this scene I recommend that you press Shift C on the keyboard. This ensures that the 3D cursor is at the world space centre. Any new objects placed in a scene are positioned where the 3D cursor is. By default the 3D cursor should be in the world space centre but it's quite easy to accidentally left click somewhere in the viewport and that will reposition the 3D cursor. When building models like we're going to do now, it's generally easier to build them at the centre. So if you want your new objects to be placed at world space centre, do shift C before you add them. I'm also going to rotate the viewport camera so that the X axis, shown in red, is pointing to the right. You can also see that the blue axis is pointing upwards. The blue axis is the Z axis. When the axes are arranged in this way, it means that we're viewing the scene from the front angle. It's a good way to work because you know that X is always going to be left and right. Let's have another look at this drawing. We'll start by making the table top, and when we've made it, we'll put it in exactly the right position. If we get one part in exactly the right position, it makes it a lot easier to build all the other parts around that part because we know it's right. As I said earlier, the basic form of this table is a box and four cylinders. So I'm going to start by adding the box. And that's actually called a cube in Blender, and we can find it here in this menu. And next I'm going to open the Properties panel by pressing N on the keyboard. Right at the top of a Properties panel is something called Transform and these are the tools that we use when we want to change the properties of an object such as its size or its rotation or its position and we're going to change the dimensions here. The size of a table is 60 by 60 by 3 centimeters so we need to translate that into meters so that's 0 0.6 in X, uh, 0 0.6 in Y and 0 0.03 in Z. Sometimes when you put dimensions in, things end up not quite where you expect them to be and this looks very, very small. This is a good opportunity for us to use the camera fly mode. You can start camera fly mode by using shift plus F. Then you can use the mouse to point the camera and you can use the forward arrow key to move the camera towards the tabletop. To apply the new camera position and exit fly mode, press enter. OK, so there's our tabletop. At this stage, I want to point out something that's quite important in Blender. This tabletop started out as a cube, and Blender still thinks it is a cube. It thinks it's a cube that's been scaled. So now we're going to tell it that it's no longer a cube. If you press Ctrl A, and in the menu that comes up, go to Scale, what this will do when I hit it, is it will make it into a new object and reset the scale to 1, 1, 1. You're probably wondering why we bothered doing that, and in fact at this stage it doesn't really matter. 
However, in advanced modelling it does matter, so be aware of it for now. The height of a table top is 73cm to the top surface, which means it's 71.5cm to the middle of the table top. Everything is measured from the centre in Blender. To put this into Blender, I go to the location Z value and enter 0 0.715. OK, time to add some more geometry. This time we'll add a cylinder. This is going to be one of the legs. And there you can see that Blender has given us a default cylinder of default size and placed its centre at the centre of this world space grid that we're working in. If you have a look at the drawing again, the leg was 6cm diameter and 70cm high. So we put those figures into the dimensions here. So that's 0 0.06 for the diameter and 0.7 for the height. Now Blender has automatically placed the middle of this object at the center of this world space that we're working in. So all we need to do now is lift it up so that the leg is at the correct height and we can go to Z and enter 0 0.035 for that. What I'm going to do next is copy this leg a few times to make the other three legs. When you're doing this kind of work, it's good to switch between different views. You can access all the views from this menu here, but you can also use the keyboard short commands that I gave you at the beginning of this tutorial. Sometimes in Blender, when we switch views, we get a surprise. We don't see what we expect to see. And here, the camera is pointing in the right direction, but it's too low down. So I'm going to use Control and Number Pad 8 to lift the camera up and control number pad 6 to move the camera to the right. The next stage is to put this leg in the right position because at the moment it's right in the middle of a table. I've got to move it to one of the corners. The perspective view is not a very good view to do this in so I'm going to switch to an orthographic view. Again you can go through the menu to do this or you can use the keyboard short commands on the number pad. When you have an orthographic and not a perspective view, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in. It doesn't cause any problems or any distortion. Click with a mouse on the object's x-axis and drag it into position. The orthographic view is perfect for positioning things by eye. Copy the object. Paste the object. It puts it in the same position, then drag it to the other corner again by dragging its x-axis. Now from this angle, which is the front view, the table looks OK. But let's have a look at it in the perspective view. Switch back to perspective with number pad 5, and there you go again, everything's disappeared, where's it all gone? When this happens, just press Shift-C. Shift-C puts the camera in a position which will show everything in the scene. Once you can see everything in the scene, then you know where to go with a camera. And in this case, I'm going to switch to camera fly mode and just move in with a mouse and keys. And I'm going to move around that a bit. And you can see that the legs are actually in the middle of the table. You couldn't see that from the front view. But now we can. OK, I'll stop there and press enter to apply the camera position and exit fly mode. With the original leg still selected, hold down the shift key and right click on the other leg. This will select both legs. Now we can move both legs together. However, we're not going to do it in this view. We're going to switch to a side orthographic view to do it, so we can do it accurately. So first switch to a side view. And as you can see, it's not lined up. This time, instead of moving the camera around to line it up, we'll use an automatic tool that will line it up for us. It's called View Selected. You can go through the menu like this, or you can press the decimal symbol on the number pad to do it. And when you choose that option, you'll see that it automatically aligns the camera with the selected object. Switch to the orthographic view again. The next thing to do is to move the legs from the centre to the correct position. This time, move the legs in the y-axis by clicking on the green y-axis arrow and dragging it into the correct position.
copy, paste. That will have done both legs because both legs were selected. So now we're actually moving two more legs into the right position. Switch back to perspective camera. And now you can see that the legs appear to be in the right position. We'll finish off with a quick practice in camera fly mode. In this mode you control the camera with a mouse and the arrow keys. If you don't want to use the arrow keys you can also use the W, A, S and D keys on your keyboard. When you're finished with the fly mode, press enter to apply the camera position and exit fly mode. If you want to cancel the new camera position, you can press escape instead of enter. The last step of course is to save the project. So go to file, save as. This save dialog may not look familiar, but it works the same as any other. All you need to do is choose a file name, a location to be saved to and then hit the save button. In the next tutorial we'll have a look at how we can apply some materials to the table and also we'll have a look at how we can join the table together so that it becomes a single object.